Howdy, welcome to the studio. I'm JJ and I'm making Command Quest, a puzzle game where you can control anything. Since the last devlog, I've added new mechanics that allow you to explore the world, and I overhauled the art in the game and started work on the first area. Now, I haven't mentioned what areas are and why they're in my game before now, so let me explain. In Command Quest, the world is made up of separate sections. You can cross over into another section by walking over the edge of the screen, like in the original Legend of Zelda. I have this system in place because Command Quest is using a connected overworld. In most puzzle games, you transition between puzzles using a menu, but this is a little bit boring. However, some puzzle games take a creative approach, like Baba is You, one of my inspirations for Command Quest. In this game, the puzzle selection screen is a tiled scene just like any other puzzle. In Command Quest, you'll navigate the overworld just like you do in a puzzle, except there won't be any challenge or obstacles. The only issue now is that it is extremely bland. I have a few tricks up my sleeve that I can use to make this scene go from bland to glammed. Oh, that was terrible. Anyways, one of the best ways to make a scene look better is to make it detailed and interactive, and I don't mean realistic. I mean adding little things that add up. This first area is the mushroom forest, so to stay on theme, I added falling leaf particles, and it immediately adds a lot of movement to the scene. I added animated trees to sway, and I animated the bushes with a cute little bounce, and this added even more movement to the scene. It's important to remember though that you can't see movement in a screenshot, so you have to add other things to make your scene come to life. One of those things that I added was texture, and I did this by placing spots and mushrooms on the ground. I also switched to using purple mushrooms instead of green bushes because it fit thematically and instead of everything being one note, it adds some nice contrast against the green trees and the dark background. Another thing you can do is add interaction with the environment. I did this by adding birds that fly away when you get near them. This made the scene feel even more alive because it's responding to what the player does. I finished it all off by adding cute squishy animations to the birds, the player, and the environment. And it looks a lot better now than the empty scene that we started with. Command Quest is going to have a lot of gates. This is important in the story, but it's also going to help me do a few things with the design of the game. The first kind of gate is a door and the corresponding exit. A door takes you into a level and an exit takes you out of one. It's pretty simple, but it's what's allowing me to have a connected overworld and avoid those nasty menus I was telling you about. The next kind of gate is the blockade. In every level, there is a battery. This is the goal of the level. You reach the battery and the level is complete. Once you collect enough batteries, you're able to pass through the next gate. This is what's going to allow me to make sure that the player doesn't go to harder levels before they have the experience that they need to. So the world system is complete. This allows me to have a connected overworld without using menus, and it lets me control player progression using the gate system. Aside from that, the visuals have been greatly overhauled using a couple of tricks and a little bit of polish. Not shoe polish, game polish. Now there's still something missing. Even though I can control progress, I haven't added anything to progress through. So that's where the next devlog comes in, where I'll be talking about how I added puzzles to Command Quest. Subscribe to see that, and until then, thanks for watching, and stay hot.